Okay, so um, Samesh is not here today, so I'm just substituting for him. So we're going to talk about. Uh, I mean, I kind of titled this, you know, uh, this particular lecture as something about different fluids, viscosity, and its measurement. A uh, lot of contents that I've, you know, uh, kind of compiled from different sources. Uh, the references you can see there. Okay, if you want to know more about each of uh, some of the things that are going to be discussed today, you would have to go to those sources and then. A, you know, read a little bit. Okay, um, we'll just begin by just defining what is viscosity. Okay, uh, I think Sumesh did in the last class about uh, viscosity of the gases, right? And you know, talked about the you know, t power one and a half relationship that you get for gases. Um, in a layman's term, okay, uh, you know, you could just say that you know viscosity is def you know you can think about it as resistance to flow, right? That's a a laymanish definition of viscosity and uh, in uh, si units uh, what is the unit of viscosity it's what is that it's pascal second right it's pascal second and uh, so uh, you see a list here okay uh, basically there are different fluids and uh, the, the viscosity of each of these fluids are kind of listed there you know, think about um, water has a viscosity of like one ten power minus three pascal second. Okay, and uh, so now uh, y there are two columns here, right? There's one is viscosity, the other one is density. If you take a closer look at these, uh, in, in the numbers for you know different fluids, it turns out that you know it is not necessary that something that is highly dense, okay, need not be more viscous, right? I hope all of you know this fact that, for example, if I take a look at Say mercury, for example, you know, density is really high, right? Because its viscosity, okay, is just about that of water, right? Whereas the density of water is about thousand, right? So, so therefore, your density and viscosity, you know, they don't go, you know, uh, hand in hand, okay? So it, it is need not be that, you know, something that is more dense is more viscous, okay? That's really not true. So, if you want to tell somebody that uh, when when people say that you know viscosity is a kind of a quantitative measure of resistance, uh, have you kind of experienced uh, you know, uh, if you want to tell you in a in a practical way, how would you tell somebody what is viscosity? You could think of um, like case like say a simple case of running, right? If I take two cases, one is I'm running in water, other one is running in air, right? The fact that you know it's much more difficult for you to run in water, okay? You can think about this in terms of the viscosity, right? The resistance that the fluid offers. And actually, that's kind of quite clear if you look at the viscosity values. If you take water, it's one ten power minus three. If you take air, it's one point eight, you know, ten power minus five. Okay, the ratio of viscosity is about fifty. Okay, the fact that you know the water is definitely fifty times more viscous than you know air, basically you know gives you this additional resistance, which because of which you kind of run much much slower. Okay, in spite of putting the same effort, right? So that's you know you could think of you know arguments like that. To really, you know, think about the resistance that uh, you know that a fluid offers, right? Now, um, there are different types of fluids. I'm sure all of you have kind of uh, learned this at some point for sure. Uh, so there's actually a plot of uh, you know uh, your shear stress as a function of uh, shear rate, and then there's another plot next to it which is your viscosity as a function of you know uh, shear rate, right? Do you know what these? Uh, you know, do you know typical class of fluids that Kind of uh, obey such behavior. Your what is that? Newtonian fluids, right? All of you have heard of Newtonian fluids, and you know, uh, you know, your stress is proportional to you know uh, shear rate. Plus, if you measure viscosity as a function of you know shear rate, it turns out that you know the viscosity should be a constant, right? So all of you know about this, okay? Um, if you're not familiar with the terms, uh, you will see that you know a lot of people use. Um, you know your your gamma dot that you see here, right? Um, gamma dot. Um, you can actually you can call it as uh, rate of shear uh, shear rate. Uh, sorry, shear rate strain, right? Sorry, you can call it as uh, uh, shear rate, or you can also call it as you know uh, uh, a shear strain rate. Okay, uh, that kind of comes from the simple argument, right? If you have this dv by you know dy, which is the velocity gradient, okay, I can express this dv as a as dx by dt, right? Distance by time, okay. The change in length by original length, I can actually express in terms of strain, okay. And that strain divided by time is going to give you the strain rate, okay. So your gamma dot, people either call it as 
strain rate or you can also call it as a shear strain rate as well. Okay. You will you will see that you know, different books use different um, kind of terminology and you would have to be a little bit aware of these terms. Okay. And, uh, and as you know this is a classic case of Newtonian fluids. Okay. And, uh, and it turns out that you know a lot of uh, things that we use uh, they are not Newtonian right. There are different uh, so, so before you go to different kinds of fluids uh, I just want to make a point about something called as a shear rates that are typically kind of uh, exist in different processes. Okay. So, what you see is uh, the first column it is a it, it, it lists processes, the second one is what is called as a typical range of shear rates and the third one is application. Okay. So, it turns out that you know dep depending upon the processing conditions your shear rates are going to be very very di different. Okay. What I mean by that is if you have like say a cream that you are trying to apply to your you know your body for example. Okay. And when you put your cream onto your you know on the body and then if you are trying to rub it okay, the kind of shear rate the material feels is very very different okay, than maybe putting an oil onto your hair for example. Okay. So, so therefore, so for example, a typical you know uh, there is a uh, list called rubbing you know the typical shear rates would be 10 power 4 to 10 power 5 second inverse that is really fast. Okay, that's really doing a you know very fast shearing. Okay, and there are also applications. For example, if you look at sedimentation of you know fine powders, you, you have a, a column of liquid and you know other particles is settling. Okay, in such cases, you know the shear rates are very very low, 10 power minus 4 to 10 power minus 6. Okay, that's too low. So therefore, there is also need to look at okay different fluids and then have an idea as to how does the the material respond to different shear rates. Okay, so, so um, and again it depends on the kind of fluid that you are dealing with and stuff like that. Okay. Now, uh, again I think I am sure all of you know this particular plot that there are typical material flow behavior that fluids exhibit. Okay. Uh, the top two um, uh, plots are basically plots of you know shear stress versus shear rate okay. both of them basically taken from different sources. Okay. And I'm sure all of you are familiar with these terms, right? Dilatant fluid, pseudo plastic, you know, yield stress fluids, and stuff like that. Okay, I, I hope all of you know these terms, right? No, don't know. Okay, okay, these are uh, fairly simple. Okay, so now um, let's think about toothpaste. Okay, um, every morning you just go on and take your toothpaste, and you know, if you open the lid, and if you want it to fall by gravity, it's never going to fall, right? Now, of course, if you have you know if I take like say um, again there are different types of toothpaste, but typically most teeth toothpaste if you want it to come by itself you know it would not right under the action of gravity it would not. So, for, the, for that to come out you would have to apply some kind of pressure right. Okay. Now, such materials what happens you know they would not come out until you apply a particular force okay. or you can think about it in terms of a until you apply a certain stress they would not come out. Okay. So, if you look at um, you know uh, the class of fluids represented by these two fluids okay you clearly see that you know i would have to apply a non zero stress for the material to start flowing okay and such fluids okay are uh, called as yield fluids okay or it's also called as a pseudo plastic fluids and stuff like that okay so therefore if you want them to flow they would have you would have to apply some minimum stress for them to start flowing okay those are some class of fluids uh, of course you have this you know the the newtonian fluid right uh, again it's very similar to what we saw in the previous plot your stress versus shear rate is a linear variation that's your you know newtonian fluid and you can think about when you whenever you have this stress versus shear rate plot you can think about slope of these plots okay at any instant of you know shear rate you can think about it you know it as giving a resistance okay and as i mentioned okay that resistance is you know you can think about that in terms of viscosity okay therefore if i take you know a newtonian fluid like here you know your slope is constant therefore if i were to measure viscosity okay the viscosity of my fluid is going to be constant right because you know my slope is constant okay now if you take other type of fluids your viscosity could be changing as a function of shear rate okay for most for all non newtonian fluids your viscosity is going to be a function of your shear rate okay now depending upon whether the 
viscosity of the fluid is decreasing if you increase the shear rate. If that is the case, such fluids are what are called the shear thinning fluids. Okay. These are the fluids where if you take these fluids and if you start shearing them, the viscosity goes down with shear rate. Okay. Such fluids are what are called as shear thinning fluid. On the contrary, there are fluids where the viscosity could increase as a function of shear rate. Such fluids are what are called as a shear thickening fluids. Okay. Uh, uh, that is, uh, so basically your, your dilatant you know is also same as shear thinning okay. and pseudoplastic is same also same as shear thickening. Uh, I think it is the reverse, okay. I think it is the reverse, so I am sorry about that. It is the reverse, right? Because if I take a slope of these plots, now if I take say pseudoplastic for example, right? Slope is initially constant. Now if I increase the shear, uh, shear rate strain, my slope is going to decrease, right? Okay, that is it is a, a shear thinning fluid. Sorry about that. Oops. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is your shear thinning. Okay. And if I take a dilatant fluid, if I take slope at different points okay, with shear rate, my slope is increasing. Therefore, my viscosity is going to be increasing if I increase the shear rate, they are what is called a shear thickening. Okay. Yeah. So, just to you know, I just want to make a point that you know there are different class of fluids okay, and their viscosity need not be constant, you know, it could be varying as a function of shear rate and depending upon whether it increases, decreases or remain constant, you can basically think about fluids in different you know uh, and the most of the fluids that you come across in uh, daily life or you know and, or, or in industrial processes, they kind of you know kind of fall into some of these categories. Okay. Um, okay. So, now um, okay. so, the question would be uh, can you think of uh, can you think of uh, a fluid uh, that could exhibit all different behavior, w one fluid which can be both shear thinning, shear thickening and Newtonian. So, so can you think, can you, can you name some example of uh, Newtonian fluids for that? A lot of fluid that you use right, water, you know honey for example you know all of that right. Uh, so, for them you know if you measure viscosity as a function of shear rate, it is going to be a constant value, they are all Newtonian fluids. Any example of some fluid where you know the viscosity need not be constant, have you thought of some example? You should go back and take a look at some nice videos on YouTube. Okay. Um, there is a nice video of uh, you take a take water. Okay then you mix what is called as a cornstarch. Okay. If you go on adding some cornstarch at some point okay, it starts behaving you know very some funny way. Okay. So, there are, there are nice videos where people are made you know um, like say a bathtub you know made of this fluid and you can actually walk through the fluid. Okay. That is because you know at the instant of if you are running through this fluid at the instant of contact between your foot and, and the you know bathtub the viscosity goes up very high okay, and that can actually support the whole weight of the person who is walking on the, who is running on the, on the back. Okay. So, uh, a classic case of fluids okay, which exhibit all this flu, you know properties in one you know in the same fluid is, is an example of something called as a, a colloidal dispersions or nanoparticle dispersions. Okay. Uh, simple way to think about this would be these are slurries, okay. uh, this is a liquid with some particles. Okay. Uh, the particles could be very small in size nanoparticles, it could be micron in size or it could be even larger macroscopic particles. Okay. So, what you are seeing in this plot is actually it is a, a plot of viscosity as a function of shear stress. You could also have a I, instead of shear stress I could have also plotted a shear rate as well. Okay. Uh, what you should note is that for each plot that you have uh, there is a parameter that is defined okay, that is called phi. Okay and that phi is what is called as a volume fraction of particles in the fluid. Okay. Phi is equal to 0 corresponds to 
a pure fluid without any particles. Okay. If I say uh, like say phi is equal to 0 0.09, okay, that basically corresponds to a case where I have 9 percentage of particles in the fluid. Similarly, if I say phi is equal to 50, 0 0.50, you know you are 50 percent fluid and 50 percent particles. right? So, all that has been done here is they have subjected this fluid to a similar test of basically measuring viscosity as a function of you know your shear stress okay, and as a function of different concentration you know is a, is a result. right? And if you look at the low concentration data okay, that is you know from about 0 to 0 0.18 you can see that you know the viscosity versus you know your shear rate is a, a flat line. Okay. So, basically that is your Newtonian behavior. right? right that is your Newtonian behavior. Now, if you go a little bit higher in concentration you know point three four and point two eight, okay, okay, what you see is initially you know your viscosity is constant and that is basically followed by a very small decrease okay. and that small decrease okay, is an example of a case where you know there is a shear thinning behavior. right? Now, if I go a little bit higher up in the concentration, it turns out that there is of course, a decrease followed by an increase at a higher shear stress. Okay. That is an example of a case where you have both shear thinning in this region and a shear thickening in this region. Okay. So, and this phenomenon of shear thickening actually has been exploited in a lot of applications. So, I have kind of you know uh, given, given you some applications that um, one common example is a, a body armor. Okay. So, whenever people have this bulletproof you know jackets, okay, what is there? You know, th there are recent developments where in between different layers of cloth, okay, what they put is you know these fluids, okay, which when you know a bullet penetrates at a very high you know force, it basically in locally solidifies the material, okay, and thereby stopping you know the you know the bullet from penetrating into the vest, okay. So, so there are applications of such material. So, I just wanted to, uh, you know, give you a little. Okay, so now there's a there's an understanding as to why this happens. Okay, uh, okay. So, so the the common, you know, the picture that people kind of think about is that uh, the case where you have your shear, you know, your Newtonian behavior is a case where you know you have kind of a randomly distributed particles in your fluid. Okay, and you're subjecting them to you know your shear flow okay right and then if you go for a higher shear rate or shear stress it turns out that there's some kind of a ordering okay and and kind of particle form these lanes okay lines of you know particles and these lines of particles essentially you can think about them as offering less resistance for the flow okay one way to think about this would be you know uh, a randomly moving traffic versus traffic in a lane. Okay, okay. So now, if you go higher up in the shear rate or shear stress, what happens is you know you are basically uh, forming what are called as particulate clusters. Okay, you, when you are trying to you know kind of uh, shear them at a very high shear rate, all the particles are kind of brought together, and you kind of form locally these clusters. Okay, and these clusters kind of interlock. Okay. And this interlocking of these clusters, in a way, leads to uh, enhanced resistance. Okay, thereby the viscosity goes up. Okay, so this is a, a kind of understanding that people have about such fluids. Okay. Okay, so that's about different types of uh, you know fluids. You know, just to give you a picture of you know different class of fluids. Okay, so all that we have done so far is we have just said something about what is viscosity. And then we have kind of discussed different class of fluids, and I just took one example of a, a particular class of fluid where you see the Newtonian, non-Newtonian, you know, behavior in the same fluid, right? That's what we have done.